Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett, and today we're checking out the Fender Pro Junior 4. Welcome to the channel everyone. Before we get started, I want to say a huge thanks to Zounds. I have this amp on loan as part of Zounds affiliate program. If you want to thank Zounds and if you want to thank me, if you do any shopping through the link below, whether you get the Pro Junior or anything else that you shop through that link, they get a cool sale, I get a little commission, you get cool gear. I really like to think that we all win in the end. Moving right along. This is the Fender Pro Junior 4. Now, I've had a lot of requests to do a review of this amp, in no small part because I've done many videos of the Fender Blues Junior over the year, and this one is very comparable in many ways. It's a similar price point, similar size and uh, you know relative use, similar demographic of people who are interested in it. This is a very simple, straightforward 15-watt tube amp. It's got a 10-inch speaker, it's got a single input, it's got a volume and a tone. In many ways, this harkens back to some of the really vintage small tweed amps that Fender made back in the 1950s. And I think it's really smart in that light that Fender decided to put these out regularly in tweed. For years, you could get the earlier versions of the Pro Junior and the black Tolex only, with the exception of once in a while they did like a limited run with tweed. Because of the tweed Tolex, though, this, I mean, it, it just looks the part. It really, it's kind of like a modern iteration of some of these older tube amps, specifically something like the Fender Princeton Tweed, the, the earlier Princeton Tweed, or the Fender Harvard. It's not a, it's not a one for one by any means, but it, it is kind of like, again, you know, something uh, more in that lineage than, than other things. The great thing about this amp is it just kind of gets out of the way of your guitar and your playing. That's really good for people who like to just kind of, you know, plug and slug, grip and rip, just, you know, go plug in, get a natural tone. There is something very natural about the tone. It doesn't feel like there's anything in the way of your guitar's signal. But there are also some caveats about that. There's not really a lot of tone shaping you can do. You know, the tone knob, I, I won't say it's much of a tone sculpting knob. It's like, yeah, you can make it sound a little darker. You can make it sound a little brighter. But generally speaking, it sounds the way it sounds. And I think where you put the tone is just where it sounds best for your guitar and for your style of play. Same with the drive. Now, it has a really nice natural overdrive, but you can only get that natural overdrive when you turn it up. Now, it's not an impossibly loud amplifier, but there are going to be certain situations where you won't be able to turn it all the way up. So then you'd kind of be relegated to using an overdrive pedal. Not that that's a bad thing, but, you know, for an amp like this, where I think a lot of people get it because they just want to turn it up and then use their guitar's volume knob, also understand that there are limits to that. Now, in that line of thinking, a lot of people are going to ask whether or not this is going to be good for gigging. Is this loud enough for gigs? Will it cut through? That's a really hard question to answer, and I'll tell you why. First of all, it depends on the size of the room you're playing. Second of all, it depends on your drummer. Those two things are very difficult to quantify. Now, if you're going to be mic'd up, fine, no issue. But if not, that's when you need to ask yourself these questions. And the second part to that is it's pretty heavy in the lower mids. Now, this is not atypical of a, you know, turn it on and turn it up tweed tube amp. 
but that lower mid frequency can often compete with other things in the band. So in a small band, like in a trio, it's actually going to be good because it fills up a lot of that sonic space. But if you're in a big, like, five-piece plus band, that frequency might get a little troublesome, you know, especially if you have another guitar player, if you have a keyboard player, it's not going to quite cut as well. And, you know, then you might want to think about using pedals for some EQ shaping. Now, quality of tone-wise, I think it's very good for what it is and definitely punches above its weight. In fact, I've played amps, you know, up in the $1,000 range that I think don't really sound any better than this. It's not my favorite personal type of amp. You know, the single volume, single tone. I do like to do a little bit of tone shaping. I don't need an excessive amount of knobs and things. But again, it does what it does very, very well. And its price point is, I think, the real selling feature. I think this amp speaks more to the people who buy the Blues Junior than the Blues Junior does. The Blues Junior is definitely a bit louder, at least to my ear. You know, the thing is, is I think people get the Blues Junior wanting a vintage style tube amp, and it's, it's really not in many ways. It's, it, you know, it's kind of, but not really. Vintage tube amps tended to be much simpler, and I think this one fits that bill better. Now this one has a Jensen P10R, and it does have EL84s, and that does make a difference in the tone with an amp like this, because you are going to run it probably where the power tubes are warmed up at least a bit, and contributing to the character of your sound. So what I want to do now is give you a tonal profile of the amplifier, play it on a bunch of different volume settings, and really lean on the guitar's volume and tone to show you how that's kind of how you control your sound. Again, it just gets out of the way of your guitar and your guitar playing. And remember your tone knob, because, you know, like with the Les Paul, with it turned all the way up, you roll the tone back, you can get a really cool woman tone. There's just, like, a lot of cool sounds you can get out of it. Now, I am also going to hit it with an overdrive going in the amp clean. I'm going to hit it with a Boss SD-1. It probably wasn't the best choice for an overdrive in this situation, but I rolled with it anyway. And just for those of you who will run it lower and want to use a pedal with it, uh, one of the things I did find is the louder you turn it up, I did want to back off the tone just a little bit. The treble got a little brighter, a little edgier, and I thought that uh, you had a little more range on the tone knob at a lower volume. That's not atypical of a tube amp. So I am playing it with the Fender Stratocaster. It's a made in Japan Stratocaster loaded with Porter 60s vintage pickups. And I'm playing with a Les Paul. Please let us know, what do you think? Is the Pro Junior something you're in the market for? Again, if it's something that you're interested in buying or if you're interested in buying other gear from Zounds, shop through that link. It'll help all of us out. If you want to help the channel in other ways, if you send me a tip of $7 or more, I will give you access to all of my music downloads, including jam tracks. And if you upload a video of yourself playing to one of my jam tracks, tag me in it, mention the song, and I'll share it on my website. I'm Jack Fawcett. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video.